BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 109, Menstrual Cycles at Maturity. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We are continuing a series of uh, podcasts on a presentation that Kathy was invited to make to the St. Louis Family Church. And in today's segment, uh, Kathy is going to be talking about uh, women that have irregular periods, PMS, uh, hormonal imbalances before they turn 40, and then the symptoms that you look for when you treat women with hormonal imbalances after the age of 40. Mm -hmm. We had, we had a group of women that ranged from 11 to 95 in <laughs> yeah. the audience. Yeah. So, so in keeping with good, good aspects or good rules to use when you're speaking to, to a group, you have mm -hmm. to include everybody. Right. So the second segment or second part of my, my talk had to do with women who aren't imbalanced, as, aren't menopausal, aren't premenopausal, and they're, it's really before 40. So I set, ha, dedicated this mm -hmm. to the women in the audience that were young and talked about how hormones should be balanced and then how we're imbalanced because of stress, because of our genetics, because of other reasons that we all can be imbalanced and what the symptoms are like PMS, like polycystic ovaries, those, those different things that can happen to the younger women. And I saved the information for the women at over 40 for the next segment. Well, and that's a fascinating thing about giving a presentation somewhere. You have to sequence the information to build uh, your, your case, but you also have to provide something for everybody in the audience. And so that's what you were trying to do. I was. So let's listen as Kathy talks to women of all ages about the developmental sequence of issues in aging. We talked about mens menstrual cycles at when we're maturely um, having periods. When you have cramps, that means you're fertile usually don't have cramps on the pill, and that you ha are making progesterone. So that's a, a, that's a reassurance sign. Yeah, that's now, what factors interfere with our hormone balance when we're cycling? Stress. I guess there's no stress in anybody under 40, right? I mean, <laughs> kids and, and new marriages and, and all kinds of really busy stuff that you have to do. You have to take care of everybody, your parents, your children. I mean, it's really, it's really a big job. So, that, that affects it. You can go through the rest of these, but if, you're, if your thyroid's off, that's a, whole different, that's a whole different system, but they all interact like those, um, kind of like a, a clock, the inside of a clock where, of course, we don't have those anymore, kind of digital stuff, but on the inside of the clock, we used to have cogs, and, and the cogs would each stimulate each other. So we have interaction between our thyroid hormones. Your thyroid's right here. If you have a big thyroid, you have a goiter, and you need to have it checked. But our, that controls our ovaries, believe it or not. And so it makes a hormone that makes us have normal, normal cycles. So that's one of the ways. Then we can, if we have excessive exercise, you know people who just exercise all the time, they get really, really skinny and they stop having cycles. That's like anorexia. You don't have any estrogen. You can break your bones. And excess, we were meant to be moderate women, moderate people, not too much of anything, not too much food, not too much exercise. So anorexia is starvation. We don't want that. That was something that was more prominent, I think, maybe, when, when uh, Patsy and I were kids. Everybody wanted to be Twiggy. It's not good. Yeah. It's really not good. I, I had that as a, a kid, and that wasn't very healthy. Now, the three things that I see in my practice when I'm um, talking to young women, the three biggest questions and issues that I have are, and I'm not talking about pregnancy. I couldn't do everything today. So in, in an hour, I mean, I need six hours. So next time you got six hours, yeah, we can sit down yeah. and talk. <laughs> but PMS is at the top of the list. There's many misconceptions about PMS. We'll talk about that. Irregular menstrual cycles are a big deal because everybody worries about that and what it means. We'll talk about that. And then severe pelvic pain and bleeding, that is a big deal, and we'll talk about that. So the first is PMS. The symptoms are changes in mood. We know that. 
Okay, so here's the deal. If you have changes in mood all month long, that's not PMS. <laughs> okay? That's a whole different thing, and you should probably see somebody who deals with emotions, psychiatrist, internal medicine doctor, somebody who can deal with that. That, is, that, can be, that isn't your fault if you have a bad mood all the time. It's just something that you've got to, you have a um, chemical imbalance. It's not something you did to yourself. It's something that you have. It is an illness, and you need to have it looked at, but by the right doctor. So PMS usually means you're bloating, you feel terrible in the second half of your cycle. The last two weeks of your cycle, right before you have a period, is when PMS hits. And those, fancy that, that's when progesterone is supposed to be being produced. Progesterone is supposed to happen at ovulation day 14 and be produced until day 28. And then when both progesterone and estrogen drop, that's when we have a period, okay? So if you have cravings, bloating, breast pain, poor sleep, all of that means you got plenty of estrogen, not enough progesterone. So those are things that you should talk to your OBGYN to, to uh, help fix. Now, what you'll get as an answer is, usually, birth control pills. <laughs> That's how we're trained. In fact, OBGYNs were never even taught until about 10 years ago the PMS existed. Oh well, I had PMS 30 years ago. I know it existed, and I treated people with natural progesterone because a pharmacist and I, a, a compounding natural pharmacist, and I had a long conversation about all the people and me who had PMS. I used to come into my office, and I go, okay, ladies, <laughs> it's day 21, and I'm going to be really, really unhappy for a whole week. And my staff would just go, no, no, it's happening again. You know, but I'd warn them. That's good. You should always warn the people around you, especially your spouse, because they, and they usually know when it's going to be your period because you've been so irritable the week before. But PMS happens when we're young and usually before we hit, go through menopause. So it's, it's kind of a biphasic thing. But birth control pills, that works, but just make sure it doesn't kill your sex drive if you're married. And then birth, and then natural progesterone, that's the way I treat it. That's the way I think it should be treated. You ha compounding pharmacists give you a non-oral form of progesterone. Progesterone is the balancing hormone for estrogen. You have plenty of estrogen when you have PMS. You just don't have progesterone to balance it. So you need to get a natural progesterone to take every night before you go to bed. Put it under your tongue. You can put it in your vagina, you can put, you had all kinds of places to put it a long time ago. We usually use it under your tongue, because that's, prefer, that most women would prefer to do that. Let it dissolve, it goes directly into your bloodstream that way, and, the, and it stays in your body for an, an entire day. If you use creams, we had the question about progesterone creams that I got prior to the lecture. Progesterone creams generally, and I'm not saying every compounding pharmacy does it this way, but if it's a prescription, it should be, it should last about mm, 4 to 12 hours. That's not enough. And you should take it at night because it makes you tired. So I think that unless you're, if you're really good at redosing and putting it on your arms, then great. I'm not that compulsive. I don't even go to the bathroom three times a day. I mean, I can't. I'm, I'm seeing, that's the one thing I don't do. I don't, I just don't have time for that. <laughs> so I'm not going to have time to put progesterone on the insides of my arms. You know, it's just, that's not possible. So, um, so, so I prefer to, I would prefer to give you and know that you're getting a sublingual tablet compounded with natural progesterone, but everybody's got their own opinion. There's many ways to get this hormone. And, and, and creams and gels do work. I just, I don't want you to think they don't, but if they work for you, good. Now, irregular cycles. PMS, we've kind of gone over that. You know, it's a progesterone thing. Now we're gonna go to irregular cycles, and that's kind of a progesterone thing too. They can go together. If you don't have ovulation for some reason, and this is a cool system. I love talking to this church because I know you, I can say what I'm thinking. God made us to ovulate when we're well, and not ovulate when we're starving, under stress, when terrible things are happening to us because who, he, he protected us from getting pregnant. When, I mean, 
That's the reason we have periods, is to get pregnant. He protected us from all those things. So we wouldn't be carrying babies inside of us and on our arm when there was famine. And we had to get past all of those things to get this far in, in um, human development. I mean, if we didn't get that, if we didn't get past all that, and we all died in childbirth because we were undernourished or our babies died, we would never be here today. So his system was, you know, if you're under terrible stress, and, and nowadays it's kind of like a common thing to be under stress, then you're not going to get pregnant. It, the old doctors used to say, oh, go home and relax, which doesn't, doesn't really work because you're not going to relax if somebody tells you to relax. That's, right. That's never going to work. But you do have to think of something like, like relaxation techniques or time for yourself or something to help you get rid of the stress that you're, you're feeling if you're trying to get pregnant. Now, the other things that cause irregular cycles, because irregular means either really close, bleeding all the time, really far apart, that, that's all due to a low progesterone. But, but a low progesterone can be caused by low thyroid. High prolactin, a hormone from our, from our pituitary gland, it's really good when you're nursing because prolactin gives you breast milk. But if your prolactin is high at another time, it could mean a tumor, it could mean terrible stress, and that shuts down your ovulation as well. It's why we don't get pregnant if we're, if generally, don't take this to heart because some people still get pregnant when they're nursing, but it's why we generally don't get pregnant if we're nursing all the time because prolactin shuts down ovulation. So we don't make estrogen or progesterone during that time. So evaluation means going to the doctor, making an appointment, getting your hormone levels, getting a pelvic, having them maybe do an ultrasound. And then they may treat you again with birth control pills or natural progesterone. The answer may be the same, but you need to know, because some of these things need other types of treatments, you need to know what you're treating, and taking an over-the-counter progesterone is not going to work. It's just not enough. So they don't, they, nothing over-the-counter has a high enough dose to do anything for this. Um, pelvic pain and heavy bleeding can be a sign of something bad. You can see the things that can cause it, but, but one of the things that you should think about when you have really heavy bleeding, it could be a problem of hormones, or it could be a problem of the uterus itself. The lining of the uterus, the uterine wall, if you have fibroids that are in the uterine wall or polyps that are like little punching bags that are inside the uterus, then you may have bleeding from those and those can be a problem, especially if you haven't had children or you want to have children in the future. Fibroids can grow and they can disfigure your uterus and make it impossible or cause you to have surgery so that you scar and can't have babies. So you should go to see your doctor to get this taken care of if you have this. More than three months of heavy bleeding means a doctor's visit. And your doctor will go through all this, knows all of this. If you're older, endometrial cancer generally doesn't happen to young women. But if you're older, it could mean endometrial cancer. That's usually after menopause, so don't really get worried about endometrium is the lining of the uterus. Okay, so cancer on the inside of the uterus. It's like a cantaloupe in the seeds that, that bleed out every month, come out every month. It's a cancer of that, the lining of the uterus. So an ovarian cyst, you can have a big ovarian cyst, prevents you from making progesterone, makes tons of estrogen, can cause you to bleed and have pain. So those are the things you should know that they're going to look for and not be surprised. The two treatment goals for all the systems or symptoms of, of uh, hormone imbalance before the age of 40 is restore the balance or rest the ovaries. Restoring the balance is giving you the progesterone to balance your estrogen, and then resting your ovaries is what the pill does. The pill has estrogen and progesterone, very low levels, and so it, when you take it, it feeds back to your brain, to your pituitary gland, and it shuts down the production in a cyclic fashion of estrogen and progesterone. So you don't have cycles, it goes to sleep and it rests your pituitary gland, and it rests your ovaries. So we do it for three months. We reset the whole, you know, reset the whole program. It's just like pushing that reset button on your computer. And then we see if you come back and have regular cycles. So those are all things. Am I, am I, am I, it's good. have I covered this? 
pretty much. I, I'm going to answer the questions that were submitted to me at the end because yeah. I have all kinds of different questions that I couldn't incorporate in an hour lecture. So, but that's so balance or reset. Thank you again for listening to this series of podcasts on a, a speech that Kathy gave uh, to the St. Louis Family Church. Next week, if you're able to come back, Kathy's going to talk about testosterone and the fact that testosterone is a female hormone and that when women start to lose their testosterone, there are a whole cascade of events that happen as a result of that trigger in the mm -hmm. aging process. So, so this, is the meat, this was the meat of the uh, lecture. And basically, it talked about testosterone being the first change. We've talked about this before mm -hmm. in, our, in our podcast. But testosterone being the first change, then progesterone, then estrogen, all of those losses then led up to the aging process. And all the symptoms that we view as, oh, it's just aging, are really about hormone loss. So we talked about the symptoms, and we talked about what we could do about it. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.